Hey, what's good everybody? It's Anna from Blast Burn Radio and we are taking a look at week two PvP, doubles PvP. Uh, you can see me getting everybody straightened out for uh, entering order. We're going to be leading, leading with the double birds. Two reasons for this. Uh, Carmelite has Tailwind, which is is really good setup for the team. Um, J Balvin has Boom Burst. Like there's a, a there's a lot of potential here. Like J Balvin can Boom Burst while Carmelite, um, I think Carmelite has Protect at the moment. It's been a while since I played this match. I guess we're gonna see here in a moment. Um, but we we definitely got some options with this lead, which is nice. Uh, unfortunately, as we're about to see, uh, we have a really, really nasty duo awaiting us. Meowstic is, as a point of note, highly underrated. Uh, gets fake out. Pretty good, pretty good support, Mon. Uh, and of course, Tyron is is always dangerous, especially this early in the game. And I got two birds out, neither of which want to take a rock tomb. Yeah, I do have protect. I do have a protect in, in in the moment here. So we end up taking the chat out and sub it in uh, for the hippo who has great defense uh, and, and can absolutely take a resisted hit from... Uh, Tyrant. Uh, it does take a fake out. Though they were trying to prevent the early game boom burst. Here comes the, the rock tomb. The hope was to fake it out and drop it to the ground. Um, but London actually takes it pretty well. And we don't really care that it's slow. Uh, we got some chip damage from Peanut on Peanut. So that's great. Uh, unfortunately, I, I have to make a decision now. And I got to figure out what to do with this Aerodactyl that's still out here. And there's a couple things going through my head at this particular juncture. Um, one is that Aerodax is a fully evolved Pokemon and Tyrant is not. Uh, I should have calc this here, honestly. Not that we usually do calcs for BBR, but it, it would have been good to check. Um, I think that Aerodactyl in this moment can, can survive uh, some Rock Stab from Tyrant. And that it is worth potentially staying in to get some damage on Meowstic versus subbing something in. Because, and also, keep in mind, there's a lot of things that go into this calculation. Namely, that I have two other Pokemon here that are weak to rocks, like in the back. So there isn't a whole lot of sub-in options. And some of the other ones are just not hardy, hardy lads and lasses. Uh, Peanut protects itself. Look at that. Look at that hit. I, I grossly underestimated Small Dinosaur. Which was not great. We tried to hit Peanut. We tried to double into that Meowstic. That Protect turn for Steven. So good. Such a good t turn for him. <laughs> Such a bad turn for us. Reasonably speaking, if I had subbed out, I don't know who I would have brought out. Probably Hugo. I could have done a yawn turn. Um, yawn on waffles and swap into to Hugo. I mean, which is what I ended up choosing when I had to replace him on the field. So, that would have been no surprise. Saving Aerodactyl for later would have legitimately uh, helped us out, I think. There goes Peanut out the door. And Sashimi with the Intimidate. What a great week to Mon. Gyarados is so powerful. And that Intimidate for a doubles match is absolutely clutch uh, out comes taquito for steven here which is a great sub in considering we got two ground pokemon uh, on this side of the field and keep in mind we didn't have a whole lot of type variety coming into this week because of all of our deaths 
And so, like, we're we're in a rough team building spot this week, uh, and now we have we got a problem. We have a problem. I gotta choose somebody to come in on this shit. And unfortunately, because ice doesn't resist crap, like at all, it is a rough situation out here. And Taquito leaves as soon as he comes in, pretty much. And out comes Optimus. This little shithead is way better than he has any right to be. Um, Ponyard isn't what I would normally consider out of outside of Little Cup to be something outstanding, but Bisharp is, and I mean Ponyard is just Little Bisharp. It does a lot of the same things uh, really well. Uh, but one of the things that Steven has on his side for this match, because I'm pretty sure he got it this week, is Choice Band. Um, and priority on Sashimi. It also has uh, some really great, great moves that he wouldn't otherwise have access to. Here I am trying to slow this, uh, this Durgan down. With Stun Spore, and thankfully that hits, which is fantastic. That Dragon Rage, though, not great. Really not great. And here come the Sneaky Pebbles. Both of my opponents have Sneaky Pebbles this this uh, season. And this early in the season. And it's very bad for me. It's, it's not a good time. I have too much that flies or is fire. We managed to put some rocks on. Sashimi on the other side, which is great. Um, slow that thing down. Not that it was super fast with uh, paralysis up. Optimus subs right out. He's, he's out of here. Uh, Takedo comes back in. This isn't the worst situation for us. Uh, and look at that damage. Not even fully evolved yet. Rose is really good, y'all. Um... Do some serious damage over here to Sashimi. I really got to get... Takito... Out. Or take London out of the fight because he's not going to live... He's not going to live through... Yes, my cat is freaking out. There he is. Look at this. Look at this monster. He's our very own Poke friend. Uh, but we choose instead of uh, assaulting Takito to try and get Sashimi off of the field. Because Gyarados even paralyzed is a huge threat. And its ability to come back out and intimidate is... It's more important to remove that threat than it is to deal with um, the Quilladin in the moment. But for reals, J Balvin takes like some, some serious damage from those rocks on the way in. Uh, again, Sneaky Pebbles doing that work. Meowstic comes out and can drop some psychic moves, which obviously is not super great for us. Sorry, cat catitude over here. And so we're trying to figure out what the F we're going to do. And problematically, Peanut's return to the field also means that we're probably going to see a, um, a fake out. Which sucks. <laughs> because now I have to decide, is Steven going to drop a fake out on one of my Pokemon? Or is he going to forego that with the assumption Uh, then I'm going to know that and just nuke my, my plant, which is, which is not fantastic. Unfortunately, we did take that fake out. Um, we, we did a swap, so we didn't get much done this turn. And now we got a pawn yard interface. I 
I remember this turn well, if you can't tell. Um, the, the battlefield is just a mess right now. And what I'm thinking about here is how that Ponyard has priority. And a choice band. Which is like legitimately not great. At this point in the match, like we've taken a lot of damage that we really didn't want to take. Here's the priority. <clears throat> Banded priority and J Balvin is, is dead. Uh, and I was reasonably certain it was holding its choice band because it swapped out after setting rocks, which there was really no reason to earlier. Otherwise, unless it was choice locked. I love how this lo-fi music is like really tense and creepy as things die on the field. Out comes Hugo with the hopes that maybe, just maybe, we can get some shit done. I really want this fucking meow stick gone. Here comes the dino. Not the, not the dino at all. Uh, Takito coming back out. Oh, and that special damage. The hippo is not is not here for special damage. We did a ton of damage to Meowstic, which was, was legitimately great. Um, Orenberry buffed it up a little bit, but not the end of the world. Except now we are indeed in a bit of trouble in the moment. I can't decide on who to bring out here. Well, we settle on Princess, who does unfortunately take a bunch of Sneaky Pebble damage. Icy Wind is a great, is a great move here. Um, not only is ice super effective against one of the slots on the other side, but it'll slow things down, which is really awesome. Psyshock does this hashtag too much, which, which is not great, despite being a move that is wildly inconsistent in the amount of damage it does. Uh, and we get Icy Wind off on Takito, which does a really good amount of damage and slows him down, uh, even with the berry. There's the Vine Whip, and Hugo is not looking too healthy. Hit by the Sandstorm, and then we take his Orenberry and eat it, which is freaking fantastic. What a great moment. <laughs> Out comes this lad. I love how I should be thinking about how I can kill this Ponyard. The, the camera is reminding you of that. With that zoom in. We're going to bring Princess out here, which is great. 
Bring Rose in. Hugo uses Protect. Optimus tries to Sucker Punch, and there ain't nothing going on, and Leechy can't affect Rose. This was a great turn for us. Like, legitimately, this was a great turn. And here is where I'm going to fuck it all up. So, I have a couple of really big problems right now. One is Optimus has priority and hits like a motherfucking truck. Um, the other is that Takito really needs to, to get the F out of here. Um, is low on health. It would be pretty stellar for us to remove him. Now, I have a lot of things cycling through my head at the moment. Hugo's really low. He's probably going to get Sucker Punch this turn uh, and not get an opportunity to actually attack. Um, so it's very hard to think about what, what we're going to do what we're going to do here. And I can't decide whether I want to try to get a second protect off, um, whether I want to try to kick something, uh, and what I should, more importantly, what I should do with Rose. Uh, and the clock is ticking down as I am trying to figure out what I want to end up doing. What I want to end up doing is try to kick Optimus in the hopes that, yes, he may, in fact, um, blow me up over here. Um, but with Roselia, we could either stun spore something or eliminate Takedo. Right the fuck out of here. Just, just get it done. But I'm not paying attention to the clock because I am trying really hard to make good decisions. Uh, and I take too long and then the game decides for me and folks, it ain't a great turn. Uh, we giga drain the, the wrong slot. We really needed to be in a shock that slot. And now we're going to get pin missiled on top of that. So a bunch of damage is going to come out onto Rose. Not good. Not good. Had some hard decisions to make that turn, but needed to be more decisive for certain um the switch in on the stones is just eating up our vulnerable mon there's nothing we can do about it i don't have a rapid spinner i don't have a defog option just gotta deal with it at this point i'm desperate right like the the match is not going well i need to give myself an advantage somewhere Uh, and poor princess just gets shredded. And now it's one on like three. This is a really not good situation. Here comes the pin missile again. Gross. But we did get the sleep off, which is super hype. Not that it's redonkulously gonna matter because we got 20 health to take down three Pokemon and action economy is not in our favor at this point we got Takedo out of here And here comes Pinsir with its much better stats to end my day. <clears throat> and there just ain't much that I can really, really do about that. Like, this bug is going to fuck me up. There ain't, there ain't two things to do about it. My best bet is to get as much health as I can off of a drain and hope for the best. But Pinsir is faster than me. Uh, and Rose goes down. And that's the match. A really good, good match on Steven's part. I made some really critical mistakes here um but to be fair i was also up against the wall from the go um i did not have a lot of good options transitioning right into our match with celeste um <laughs> where we have almost the same team makeup except we brought samsara 
We need some someone to do something about that Skarmory. It's a real problem. Some big callouts for this week are the pickup of the Breloom uh, and the Snorlax, which are disgusting. Uh, we are now facing down two walls. A completely competitively prepared Breloom, Technician Breloom, and some other stuff that just ain't too shabby overall. The hope for us is that we're going to bring Samsara in to start with and maybe trap someone in the front, which is great. Bring London in to set the sandstorm as well. And there we go. Match is starting. Celeste is issuing a challenge. This lead is actually not the worst for us. Um, the mushroom poses a threat uh, for sure. But since both Pokemon are vulnerable to Samsara, like we're in a position where Celeste can't be sure what we're going to target. Uh, and in the moment, I decide that the bigger threat here is is the mushroom as you're about to see um but then i completely completely fail i am so tilted from my previous match here that i completely fail to take in the fact that this thing is gonna fuck me up so bad it's not even funny uh on london and it does uh was not in a good mental space at the end of jolly's match after uh running out the turn timer which was not fantastic. And unfortunately, Samsara is not enough to take down Shiitake in one go, which would have been really helpful. Uh, we take a Brave Bird straight down to eight. Now, if any of you play a lot of doubles, like this kind of opening, this spells doom. If I was playing VGC, I'd be fucking done. Like, period. Uh, I already got one down. I got another Pokemon in, in the red, in critical, and we didn't remove anybody from the field on the other side. <clears throat> it's a very, very bad turn one. There, there's no there's no two ways about it. That failure on my part to pivot out in both matches is not, not super smart of me. I love how, as I rewatch these matches for PvP do commentary, I can see how much rust, competitive rust, I put on over the course of the year last year uh, while, while we weren't making content because my time, I've been really busy. And so I don't do a lot of the tournaments that we do in the community and it shows. And we're going to try to see what we can do here. There goes Star Screams, switching out. And out comes Benson. And here comes a uh, mock punch. That was a disgusting mock punch. That mushroom isn't boosted. Like outside of technician, it, like it doesn't have any boosts up. It's so bad. Could be life orb, I suppose. Either way, just devastating. We are in like dire straits over here. And we managed to trap a, a Charmeleon in place, which is not the most effective. And here comes Snorlax. Decide to drop the chatter to get the confused off somewhere. We got to figure out where the best best place to put it is. But the problem is, is that Snorlax is so specially bulky. 
And even though I would rather remove Snorlax from the field, the, the chances of that being impactful are so minimal that we drop it on Charmeleon. And it does a fair amount of damage and it confuses it, which is great. Eats a citrus berry. And lives another day, which... Legit is not great. And there goes Samsara. And here comes the body slam. <laughs> like we're we're zooming in on inevitability territory at this point. I think we got three three things left. I mean, we're about to find out. Yep, three things left. We have Carmelite. We got Rose. We got Hugo. I love how my lo-fi beats have lyrics and I tell it every single time I sit down to do one of these. Don't give me lo-fi beats with lyrics. Just give me the beats. Just the beats. And it never listens to me. Out comes the Rock and Ground crew. We decided to get a double kick onto the Snorlax and um, in the hopes that we can actually do some damage to it. And finish off uh, Benson, which is really, really needed. Here comes the double kick, y'all. For real, I think we took more damage from Rocky Helmet than we did to that Snorlax, which is a huge fucking problem. This was the moment I knew Hugo was going to get retired from the team. And he got a yawn off, so now we have limited switch options at this point. And i got to make a really tough decision. Is Are we staying in and taking a nap to get some damage out of here? Or are we... Gonna just go have a bad time. It's a kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. And ultimately, since we have a, a, a grass Pokemon in the back, we decide... To see what we can do uh, for damage on this turn before we take a nap. And we do do some damage there to Yum Yan. Yum Yum Yan. Uh, but it is not, it's not exactly what we're looking for. And the second kick isn't enough to bring Glimmer down. Uh, which is not great. And here comes Refrigerate Return. Absolutely demolishes me. Here's the yawn. There ain't anything we can do about taking a nap now. And now I'm facing down like absolute death. So this dinosaur has to go. Regardless of what I want or don't want. It, it's really going to get out of here. I'm reasonably certain that we're going to go first. Get this thing the heck out of Dodge. Which we do. Which is good. But y'all know what is in the back over there. There's, there's rest, which is god awful. The Skarmory is a coming, y'all. The Skarmory is a coming, equipped with Brave Bird. Hugo is asleep. Not good. A 
I think about doing the grass whistle. And instead I settle on the stun spore. Just because it's so unlikely I'm going to hit that grass whistle. Hoping to buy myself a little bit of action economy. Which we get. We like it's all good stuff. We get the full para right there. But this is this is us fighting a, a, an uphill not even an uphill battle. Like this is a mountain battle at this point. Like we're in a real bad spot. These two walls are completely healthy. And unfortunately, Rose can't really do anything to either of them. Like, watch this. You remember how hard Rose hit earlier? Did nothing to, to Yummy in at all, uh, which isn't great. Uh, here comes the Brave Bird. And yeah, we're, we're made of paper. So Brave Bird takes care of your girl Rose. And now, 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 we fucked. But that's okay. Like legitimately, I look back on PvP this week and like I try to acknowledge the fact that I had four deaths this week. And while some of the types that I lost, I also had like types around for like, it would have been good to have some more variety. Trying to break these two walls was almost impossible. Um, and I played better against Steven. I made some, uh, some critical mistakes in both matches to be totally honest with you. I own those. Those are mine. Might be. Um, but they, they were largely the icing on the cake of a, a very difficult pitched battle on my end. So I try not to feel too badly about it. And there we go. That's the end. Hey y'all, it's Anna from Biasburg Radio. Thank you so much for watching and joining me on our journey through the Kalos region. If you want to make sure to keep up to date on all the gameplay for Blastford Radio Season 8, you can do so here on YouTube and only on YouTube this season. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Maybe give us a like if you enjoyed the video. And additionally, if you want to make sure you don't miss a single video, you got to hit that bell. That's the way YouTube works. I don't make the rules. From all of us here at Blastford Radio, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for loving our show. And we will see you next time. Bye.